Today on Superfan. Ohio State plays Rutgers at the Ohio Stadium on October 1st, 2016. Coming up next, up close and personal with the newly crowned homecoming king and queen. We have the halftime show, game highlights, post-conference, and much more. You're watching Superfan, your Buckeye football news feed. On behalf of the Ohio State University Alumni Association and our 535,000 living alumni, I congratulate you. Today, we present to you these recognition checks and official Ohio State University rings as our way of acknowledging your accomplishments. Our best wishes to you and your court as you represent the Ohio State University. Thank you for all you do for Ohio State and congratulations on this outstanding achievement. The reason I wanted to run for Homecoming King is because I had met highly influential people throughout my experience, especially freshmen and sophomore year, who are on Homecoming Court. So I really wanted the opportunity to hopefully kind of inspire the next coming Buckeyes as they went through their journey from freshman year through senior year. And so that's why I really wanted this opportunity. Nice. And what does it take to become like on the court? How do you? To, to be on the court, it really just you really just need to focus on how you want to make an impact early on in your college career. So freshman, sophomore year, really analyzing how can I make a large impact on this university. And then what would you give like five tips to students who actually want to consider running for homecoming court? Five tips. Yes. Be yourself. Join organizations you're passionate about. Create a community that really supports you. Take, don't take anything for granted. And just kind of keep a smile on your face throughout your journey. I'm Preeti Chidambaram. Okay. What year are you? I'm a fourth year and I'm studying biomedical engineering. What made you want to run for Homecoming Queen? Um, the people who've come before me on Homecoming Courts, they're the people who've inspired me and shown me what it means to be a Buckeye, and I was hoping I could pass that on to younger students. Okay. And then what do you think it takes to be like nominated or even um, accepted onto the court? I think it really, um, I think a lot of court is about service and giving back to this university and our community and the students and the people who've made us who we are, and I think that's the most important part. Okay. Yeah. If you could get five tips to the students who want to consider running, what would you give them? Oh wow, um, get involved in things because you're passionate about them and not just because you're supposed to do them. Um, that's probably my biggest tip. And then I would say um, get excited about being a Buckeye. There's so many opportunities here and there's not just one way to do it um, and you can do whatever you want here. So that's I guess two. A um, couple more. Um, learn the fight songs. <laughs> Wear scarlet and gray everywhere you go. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, just be thankful. Be really, really thankful for this. Be thankful for this university and these people. And how are you going to celebrate tonight? I'm going to hang out with my family. I'm just really excited to go hug them right now. So.
Coach Earl Bruce owns 81 of Ohio State's 878 total victories, and the best damn band in the land honored him by inviting him to dot the I before the Big Ten opener. Congratulations to my mentor, uh, Earl Bruce, a guy that uh, means the world to so many people in Buckeye Nation. And uh, I think one of the greatest constituencies of Coach Bruce is the high school coaches in this great state. You know, he was a high school coach for many, many years and uh, followed Coach Hayes and had a brilliant career here. And, and uh, I just, you know, some people learn from different people. I learned from him. What I learned from him was uh, you do right. There's no gray area and uh, following the rules. Also about the premium placed on education and toughness. That's what I take from Earl Bruce and I'd like to. The Buckeyes were primed and ready to take on the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, led by first year head coach Chris Ash. Ash is less than a year removed from the scarlet and gray defense. On the first drive of the game, Chris Laviano connected with Jawan Harris twice for a couple of early first downs. But then, he met Marshawn Lattimore and the rest of the Ohio State defense. From there, Laviano struggled, completing just three of 16 total pass attempts. Ohio State's first drive ended when Anthony Chafee intercepted this tipped JT Barrett pass. From there, the Buckeye offense lit up the gridiron, scoring on their next nine possessions. Here, Curtis Samuel picked up 30 yards on the ground, setting up an 18-yard catch and stretch for the score by Dontre Wilson. Samuel dodged a defender and gained 16 yards to the 27-yard line, paving the way for JT's second pass touchdown of the game and Terry McLaurin's first in a Buckeye uniform. Meyer's offense then ran the two-minute drill to perfection twice in the last four minutes of the first half, with receiving touchdowns by number 85 Marcus Ball and Curtis Samuel giving Ohio State a 30 to nothing lead at the break. To start the third quarter, running back Mike Weber scored on a 46-yard run and was robbed of another touchdown when the whistle blew before he was down. But that didn't slow the Buckeyes down as Barrett sold the run up the middle before pitching back to Paris Campbell who trotted in for the score. With week five in the books, the final score, 58-0 for the number two team in the country who owned both sides of the ball. The D may not have forced a turnover this week. However, they did hold their own, forcing the shutout and allowing a season-low 116 total yards. How have the new 16 starters adjusted and improved since their first game of the season, and what do they need to do both on and off the field to progress? Uh, they've done okay. I mean, there are a bunch of new names out there. You saw we played Ben Victor today, and he's a guy that he's just too good. He's too good of a player to uh, sitting, sitting around. He won't be here for five years. So we said, go, let that dog eat, and, and you'll see more and more of him. He's just getting better and better. So I, to answer your question, I think our guys adjusted well. Um, we just need to continue to get uh, depth in our program because uh, we have eight weeks left, and it's an eight-week, uh, it's going to be uh, a journey. So we need to continue to build depth. Surprise, surprise, this week's Holy Buckeye player of the game, quarterback JT Barrett. Barrett completed 72% of his passes for 238 yards and four scores, which gives JT 59 career pass touchdowns, breaking Bobby Hoyne's record of 57. I, mean, I didn't know coming into the game I was about to break the record. Seriously? You didn't. It wasn't like, hey, I'm going to throw a lot of touchdown passes today, so I just didn't know. But, uh, Finally, let's take a look at the Big Ten standings. The Cornhuskers are the sole unbeaten out west, with the Badgers in second coming off the tough loss at Michigan. While Michigan, Ohio State, and Maryland own the top three spots in the east, Indiana sits at fourth at 3-1 as they prepare to take on their biggest challenge of the year, your Ohio State Buckeyes, live on ESPN October 8th from the shoe at 3.30 p.m. With Buckeye TV, I'm Joshua Stanley.